thanks for clicking on my video and I came in today y'all to talk about uh, another aspect of this entire sweetie pie saga you know the murder for hire my past videos have focused on Tim Tim and what he did and Tim and this whole plot to have his nephew murdered but through reading all of your comments and after reading them, because I read all of them, y'all, I I started to think about the other people that were involved and think about, like, what were they thinking? How did Tim convince them to do what they did in this whole plot? You know, how did he get them to do it? So the first thing, y'all, that I wanted to talk about, because as I do these videos, you guys are leaving comments that are so interesting to me and upsets me even more about this whole situation with what Tim did. So the first comment that I saw that really not only disgusted me, but made me start to think one of you guys posted that when andre's funeral occurred that tim went to andre's funeral with bodyguards and a bulletproof vest on now the comment that i read i don't remember what video of mine that it was under but the person kind of let me know that it was all like fake the reason why he had the bulletproof vest on and the bodyguards. The person said it was to make it seem like that after Andre's death, the rest of the family was worried because they thought they might be a target. And that's the reason why Tim was supposedly wearing, you know, all of that and showed up with bodyguards. But as I started to think about it, I was with that person that put that post under my video. I think it was all part of his plan to, you know, make it seem like he was innocent and he was worried. He wasn't worried because he knew that he was the one who set it all up. Y'all, when I read that, I was like, this bastard is even more rotten than you know you could even imagine and then another thing another post that i saw that one of y'all left y'all let me know that tim has a public defender that apparently he does not have the money to pay for his own private lawyer so I was sitting there like, okay, so you know, stole money out your mama's account. You probably stole the two hundred dollars from her house. Um, you got all these restaurants that you've opened using Miss Robbie's money, and you mean to tell me you can't hire your own attorney? That you had to get a public defender? Like you don't have no money. Now I did hear from y'all that his other businesses are not doing well. And, and, and I want to stop right here before I go on. I want to thank all of y'all for commenting, putting information that you have heard. Because the information that we are getting so far is a little sketchy. And because we all fell in love with Miss Robbie and the family it's almost like we're invested in it we're not doing these videos because you know we're we're being nosy or we tr we trying to you know invade in their lives it's almost like they're our family you fell in love with charles you fell in love with miss robbie her sisters and it almost felt like they were our family and we were rooting for them, you know, wanted Miss Robbie to blow up even more and all of that. So that's why, y'all, I'm moving around. So if it sounds like a bunch of noise, that's what it is. 
So I just wanted to thank y'all again for posting your comments, which give me something else to think about. Because trust me, after I read each one of them, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know that. Or, oh, I'm glad she let me know that. Now, um, something else that, and a lot of the stuff that I am going to talk about is directly taken from what you guys have posted. Another person told me that Andre's family already suspected Tim. And the reason why they suspected Tim is because Andre himself told his mother and his sister that if anything happened to him, to look at Tim. Now, y'all, that one also made me really think. Because let me just tell it like this. I have a son. Y'all all know it. I got two brothers. I think I've talked about that um, several times. I got my two brothers are at total opposite ends of the spectrum. One is a male chauvinist that I never tell my son to ask advice from, you know, from. And my other brother is too nice, you know, and sometimes a lot of women run him over. But I notice that when my son goes to them or has interaction with them, one of them is a little rougher with him than the other one. You know, um, my son will be down and, you know, he needs to talk to a, a man. And remember, their dad, dad died a week before my daughter went off to college. So he doesn't have, you know, that male figure father, you know, to talk to. And he's at an age where he does. The reason why I bring that up, that my son kind of listens to my nicer brother, a little bit more than he does my other brother because my other my other brother can be a little rough with his advice you know he ain't got time he gonna tell it like it is he don't care if he hurts your feelings my other brother is a little more gentle with the advice he gives him the same advice but he considers my son's feelings now again the reason why i bring this up is because just say that andre felt like tim was a little rough with him but that roughness would not be to the point where he felt the need to tell his um, family down in Texas that if I'm ever dead, then Tim did it. So it had to be something else that Tim did to Andre. You know, not fussing at him, not getting on his case if he saw him goofing off in the restaurants. Not anything like that, because those are things uncles do. Now, like I said, you might have one uncle that might grab you up, shake you, but he's not being like violent with you. He's just getting you in line. And I grew up with aunts and uncles that did that. We have had some aunts and uncles that we didn't mess with because they not only would grab you up, but they would spank you. And then we had other aunts and uncles that we knew we could get away with stuff so it had to be something that tim did to andre that scared andre to the point where andre felt like he needed to let somebody know that you know i'm kind of worried about him you know he's a little bit too much and if i ever come up missing or something happened to me y'all look at him what did tim do to andre y'all that's my question. Because his sister, Andre's sister, is on Facebook. And her Facebook information is public. And several YouTubers have taken screenshots of different comments that Andre's sister has made on her Facebook page. And one of those comments included, from what I'm understanding, that Andre told his family that. And that's why they believed all along that Tim had something to do with it. Y'all, I find that very interesting. And I believe that when they go to court, we're going to find out what made Andre tell his family that. 
Y'all, every time I think about what was going through that boy's head, is all of this is, you know, building up to that day when he was killed. I mean, and when I say that boy, I mean Andre, you know, what was going through his head. Now, y'all, just recently, Terica, the girl that was Tim's co-conspirator, went to court. And I guess this is like her arraignment and she gets to tell her side of the story and all of that. So a couple of y'all have already had already told me this, that she met Andre first at a strip club there in St. Louis. And then I guess shortly after, and y'all, if I get any of this that y'all told me incorrect, just correct me down, you know, in the comments, because I'm taking a lot of this from the comments that you guys are leaving and then from watching other folks videos here on YouTube. So back to the story. So she met Andre first and then she met Tim. Now, I guess when she met Tim, her and Tim went on to have some type of affair. They were intimate and I guess was seeing each other. And at one point, Tim asked Terica if she knew how to get in touch with Andre. And I guess he let her know that, you know, some money had come up missing from his mother's house and that Andre was a suspect. Now, remember, y'all, all of that is alleged. And I do not believe that Andre took that money. Now, that's just my opinion. Like I said, I could be wrong, but I just don't believe it. So Tim let her know, you know, I need to get in touch with Andre. So evidently, Tim, we all know, bought them burner phones. Now, I had heard that Terica, well, let me let me finish on with this part. So Tim had bought a burner phone, gave it to Terica, and he told Terica, Remove my number out of your other phone, and when you call me, only call me from the burner phone. So, I guess Terica let, you know, got in touch with Andre, and, you know, got his whereabouts, and let Tim know. Now, I guess, from what I'm hearing, they tried this whole execution another time. Now, I saw this on someone else's video, and it didn't work the first time because I guess wherever Andre said he was going to be, he wasn't. So they had to try for it again. Now, y'all, if this is wrong, correct me. So then, Terika calls Tim and let him know that, okay, I've set it up again. Andre didn't want me to meet him at this one place. He you know, suggested that I meet him at this other place. Now, this place, this second place, is a place where Andre ultimately was killed. So she had the location correct. Now, y'all, this is the information that Terica is telling the authorities in her arraignment. Okay, so when all of this went down, from what I'm understanding, Tim paid for Terica's ticket to fly, um, you know, I guess back and forth to St. Louis to to find out information on Andre and I guess to keep tabs on him. Now, I don't believe that he paid for her to fly up there when um, Andre was killed because remember, she said that she drove away and drove back to, you know, Memphis or wherever she came from. Now, here's another thing that I read in your comments and I don't believe it. So y'all told me that this is how it went down the day that Andre was killed. That Terica shows up on that street, Natural Bridge or National Bridge or whatever the name of it is. She calls Andre. Andre comes out. You know, she tells him she bought him some pants and that she wanted to see him, and he came out. They sat in the car and talked a little bit. Again, I guess eventually the conversation wound down. Andre prepares to get out the car, go back into where, 
you know, he was there doing music. And when he gets out the car, Terika claims that she drove away. And as she was driving away, she heard gunshots. Okay. And I guess that was the moment that Andre was killed. Now, Terika is saying that she did not know that the reason that Tim wanted to, I guess, meet up with Andre is to have him killed. She thought, so she claims, y'all, that she was just getting those two together to talk about, I guess, the money missing from Miss Robbie's house and whatever other issues that Tim had with Andre. I don't believe that, y'all. I believe that if Tim and that girl was screwing, he was paying for tickets for her to fly back and forth to St. Louis. He was buying her burner phones. He was giving her $9,000 to $10,000. What was all that for? What did he explain to her that all of this money was for? Why was it so important for her to be paid for just getting the two of them together. For getting Tim and Andre together. You don't pay people $10,000 to set up a meeting. You know what I mean, y'all? So the whole point I'm trying to make is I believe that Tim used Terika. Now, she was a willing participant because she wanted that money. But Tim used Every avenue at his disposal to, to lure Andre. When he found out that Terika knew him, then he said, you know what? I'm going to use her to lure Andre. She got out of it the $10,000 because I believe that Tim broke it down to her. I believe that he told her something like this, y'all. I believe he probably said, you know, that fool stole some money from my mama, $200,000 out of her house, and I got something for him. Now, this is where I was like, is Terrica this rotten of a bitch or not? Did Tim say, because when they had the first meeting and it didn't go through, Tim had told her that his boys wasn't ready anyway. So when they had the second meeting, I guess Terrica was aware that Tim's boys were ready to move on this second meeting. So did Tim tell her that the second meeting was he was going to have somebody beat Andre up? Or did he actually tell her that he was going to have Andre murdered? Now, that's one that I'm wondering. Maybe he did tell her that... The only thing that he wanted to do was go there, beat the shit out of Andre, fuck him up for taking money from his mother's house. Maybe that's what he told her. Now, a lot of y'all said, hell to the no, Rachel. Y'all said, Tim told that girl she was in on it. She knew, you know, from A to Z what he planned to do when he got to that house as it pertained to Andre. And that was to have... Andre executed. Y'all don't buy that she didn't know. Y'all don't buy that she possibly believed that maybe Tim um, was just going to have him beat up, beaten up really bad. Y'all don't buy that. And the more that I think about it, especially y'all with that $10,000, I'm inclined to believe that she was just that rotten, that y'all are right. And that she knew that Tim was luring Andre out that house for him to be shot. Now, y'all, when it comes to the insurance agent, that Wally or Wiley guy. So we know that Tim didn't have one policy for $450,000. There were three separate policies. I guess he couldn't get it all in one, so he broke it down into three policies. You know, I told y'all before that there were two for 200,000, two separate ones, 200,000 each, and then that last one was for the $50,000.
So here's what I was thinking about the insurance agents, the insurance agent. What did Tim tell him? Why did Tim tell him that he needed all of this insurance on Andre? What did Tim tell him about why he was fabricating information on Andre? Because basically they had to create false information to get that amount of money. They had to up Andre's income. I think they even said that Andre had more kids that, than he actually did because I think Andre does have a son. Um, but I think they said that Andre had more kids than he did. I think they even mentioned that um, Andre owned property. So it would bolster that amount that they were able to take out, you know, on Andre because they were showing that he had assets and, you know, um, dependents, people that he was leaving behind, you know, children that if something were to happen to him would need to be taken care of. But I'm wondering, y'all, what role did the insurance agent play in it? Was he blind to the fact that Tim was going to kill Andre? And Tim told him, if you get me this policy, you know, and something happened to him, I'll cut you a little bit. Not telling the man that that thing that's going to happen to him is that I'm going to have my nephew killed. Was the man blind to the plot? You know, maybe thinking that, yeah, here's a crooked guy trying to take out all his money on his nephew. Uh, but not knowing that Tim was going to have his nephew killed. But even with that, y'all. That is not too blind because you still, as an insurance agent, when you accepted those fraudulent documents and fraudulent information from Tim, you were breaking the law. You know, Andre didn't have all of that. Okay. So my thing was with the insurance agent, was he in on the plot? Now, you remember, y'all, this guy has worked with Nelly, you know, on some of Nelly's music. So I'm inclined to believe in this instance, maybe the guy was down for, you know, setting up the, the fraudulent insurance policies, but maybe he was ignorant to the fact that Tim was actually going to have him killed. I guess Tim probably gave him a little something extra to get the policies, like paid him for, you know, in the beginning for setting up those fraudulent policies. And then now after Andre was killed and all of this comes out, then that drew that insurance agent into all of this mess because he helped Tim. Now, I want to know down in the comments on that aspect of my hypothesis, y'all. Do y'all believe that the insurance agent might have been ignorant to the, to the, you know, the murder for hire plot, but all down for maybe getting paid a little extra to open up these fraudulent policies? Let me know down in the comments. Now, getting back to Tim and Erica. Uh, Terica. I believe that she knew the whole story. You know, at first I was thinking, well, maybe the girl just thought Tim was going to have Andre beat up real bad. And that's what he meant by, you know, his boys wasn't ready. But the more that I not only read y'all comments, but the more that I thought about, you know, all the back and forth between Tim and that girl, she had to know, y'all. She had to know. Now, from what I'm hearing, Terica and the insurance agents, uh, insurance agent are now both pointing the finger at Tim. You know, basically, they're now remembering conversations, things that happened. And they're telling the authorities all of it to save their own asses. Now, y'all, we were wondering which one of them was going to break first. 
And I know that insurance agent is somewhere sitting thinking, Lord, why did I get myself involved in this? This shit done played out. This man took out, uh, you know, all this money on this boy. And you mean to tell me the reason why you did it is you were going to have him killed? So I know he got to be sorry that he got involved. Terika seemed like she down for the shits, y'all. You know, just the lifestyle and the fact that she has a record. And, you know, the courts considered her a flight risk. And they wouldn't give her bail. You know, they pull up her past. And then all that luring of Andre, she had to know. Y'all, this is the end of the video, but this is what I want y'all to do. Y'all comments are off the chain. They are, they are interesting. They're informative. They're funny. Keep them coming because that helps us figure out where all this is going. We're not going to know a lot until Tim goes to court. And I know that his court date is coming up pretty soon. And I can't wait to hear the shit that he says. Because from what I heard, I think the fool is planning on pleading not guilty. Like he ain't had nothing to do with it. And another thing, y'all, before I get out of here. Because I've been reading your comments and because I get tired of talking to a computer screen... You know, I would love to interact with y'all, especially a lot of you that have left some of those really interesting um, comments. So in all of the videos that I'm doing about this story, I'm putting information there asking if you would like to do a live stream yard with me where we all just come on. Excuse me, y'all. I have to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. We all come on and we just sit and we discuss this case and all the different avenues and roads that we that it that it has taken and where we believe that it's going to go i would love to do that i'm looking for like three people and the way stream yard works is this um i will create a live broadcast and i can email you know three of you a link to the broadcast we are not going to be on screen, so you don't have to worry about that. Y'all know I don't do videos where I come on screen, but every so often. So this way you can speak freely, feel comfortable, and all of that. And we can just discuss this. Because like I said, y'all, I don't know what it is about Andre. But he hits me in my heart like Trayvon Martin did. And I just want justice for him. And whatever form that justice comes, if Tim set this up, I want Tim to do life. Because he took Andre's life. If they find him guilty, I want him to do life. Actually, y'all, with this premeditation, I actually think he should get the death penalty. But life would be fine. And as I end the video, I'm going to end it like I'm always going to do. Let's pray for Andre's mother. Let's pray for Miss Robbie. And let's pray for that family. The ones in Texas that love Andre and the ones in St. Louis that loved him. And with that, y'all, as always, thanks for taking time out to listen to me ramble. I'll catch you guys in the next video. You stay safe now. Bye-bye.